Um, with that, um, I'd like to echo the sentiments of uh, President Pecchia. Thank you, Milka, for being a team player last week. Um, and uh, I missed it. Last week I had my anchor TV koozie, but if I had it, I would be holding it up. Um, and that concludes my announcements. Thank you, Vice President.
again, another example. Probably took five minutes to offer. Things are kind of good today, and hopefully changing the lives of students in our community. Um, and also, I'd like to note that I'm very happy that we have a full table. But I'd like to take note there's a lot of free, there's a lot of open seats um, following it, and there's a lot of easily to obtain seats on the um, Recruit, 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 and try to bring your friends along or anyone who might be interested in student government. We can continue to get more representation for our students. Thank you. And uh, I'm going to follow up with the announcements from Deputy Speaker Ryan Duckworth.
many of y'all have been to like a Rick and Morty event game, you're missing out on a lot of fun, but not many of you probably have been. It's really awesome, especially when you're with a group of people that are getting pumped up and you know, everyone's going, you've got popcorn, you're throwing it, like it's it's great. <laughs> it really is. It's a great way to blow up steam after like a class like a really rough class, especially a four hour one, so definitely pass for your
Is that is that the kind of system you would like to reinstate again? I mean, or did you? Or was there were there flaws in that system that you recognize as an employee that you would want to um, do it differently? No. 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 I mean, you know, I think I mean, it depends on. It, was, it, it went well, but maybe there's always things that you can definitely make do better. I don't even know what they would do now because it used to work. I've been like they wouldn't want people to go into the waiver because the, those they did it in the waiver, they did it in the application, they wouldn't know what to do. And before, when you went into the waiver room, you had to leave your ID behind. Um, yeah. Now they don't have that, so now they wouldn't have a way to check upon who's done the waiver, who knows what they're doing, and who's deducting. Mm -hmm. So there's things that you gotta think about that we have to do now at this point. Um, just out of curiosity, who is the person you approached with the draft? Well, I work at the recreation center and I just asked my boss. Mm -hmm. No, but like, who is the who is the next step once you draft the policy? Who do you talk to? Like, who um, do you talk I would to? Don. Yeah, probably. It's probably Don. Yeah. All right. That's all. Thank you. Okay. Um, Representative. Oh yeah. I just want I work there probably like a week <laughs> at night. It's about 8 p.m. It's dead. It is dead. I sit there from 8 to 11, and it is empty. You get like 10, 20 people. You do get a lot of basketball players just playing in one court, but the rest is just empty. You just have to sit there. Even if there's nobody there, and just stare at the wall. So it would be <laughs> nice if we could have some people there. You know, I mean. Representative Taylor.
take the students who may need transportation uh, to that event. So there'll, there'll be more information on that uh, later on. That concludes my report, Mr. Speaker. Questions, please, questions, please, questions. Thank you. Vice President Johnson. Um, my question is regarding the shuttle service, the prospective shuttle service. Um, my first question is uh, how sure are you that you're going to make the shuttle service happen? Like, is it, is it something that still just a thought, or is it something you're putting in, you're like getting into action? No, we're, uh, well, uh, let me answer it this way. Uh, we already have identified the potential shuttle service provider, oh, okay. and we're working through uh, the purchasing process to uh, uh, set up the contract okay. for that. So I think that means that we're pretty serious about it. All right. uh, the president originally, and because she was the one who actually raised the question initially, she was thinking,
exciting thing because there has been work at all the colleges, but people all kind of doing their own thing. And now a ton of research is looking at best practice and getting feedback. Uh, the purpose is to help train faculty, uh, to train the faculty to develop those online cl uh, classes of quality and quality in their content area. Because across content, it wouldn't necessarily look the same. Um, here it's headed by the Faculty Center for Teaching and Learning, um, the Disability Services and Learning for Life. Uh, one of the big questions that they're looking at is what student experiences have been uh, with regard to the experiences at say Rhode Island College, Providence College, URI. What experiences have students already had with their online classes? So one of the questions I guess is I have two not really to be uh, addressed tonight, but perhaps you to contemplate is to look at what experiences could you document, number one. But the other piece, because that's the input really the committee needs. But the other thing is, we're trying in a systematic way to look at how can we really find out what students really feel? How could we collect that data? And how could we perhaps guess what students' experiences really have been as to when they were quality, but not just quality, but why they were quality, and when they weren't quality, what were the elements that didn't so one of the things I guess I just addressed to you is to say, perhaps you could give some input to how that information could be gotten from students in a systematic fashion. And that's all I've got. So I, I just want clarification maybe. Is this for strictly online courses or is this for courses in which you use online like teaching tools like Blackboard, et cetera? Oh, no, this is development of the actual course. So so really what they did at Rick is they did a lot of colleges. I was on the first cohort to be trained in developing an online course. Very little research out there um, behind you. But looking in across disciplines and across the colleges, people realize if you're running a biology class or you might be running an education course or a course in nursing or a course within all those areas, what are the elements that would make that kind of quality that the student is going to get just as much from the online class as he would get from the in-class? So really, the initiative is to work across college, across faculty and administrators, not in a you know silo. But at Rick, we have our group, and they have the group competing together to get input from students across the state and from faculty. The initiative is really to say how to help a faculty member develop a class online that they know is really perhaps for them doing something more, not just competing because we have an online class. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. It's really to make faculty better teachers within this community. But I would really be uh, thrilled to see if we could get input from you as to how we could, we could find out for Rick students what their experience is. Thank you.
beneficial to maybe make a discussion about online courses um, an agenda item so that way we could formulate discussion, we could have a two and two rule or you know something like that, make it an in so um, Professor Sarawagi um, has some input to take back with her um, because I don't I can't speak for the rest of the body here, but I'm uh, not very up to date on online courses. I don't I know I have very little knowledge about what we offer here, um, except some of the notes that may be in the course booklet. So um, food for thought if anyone else agrees that maybe we should make it a discussion because um, I know that one of the goals of Treasurer Day was regarding academics here at the campus. Not maybe maybe not online courses as a whole, but I know that it's an area that student government hasn't really covered too much in recent semesters. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. I was out of line. So I just want to comment that I know there was a survey emailed to all of our students previously in the spring, and it was regarding online courses and how students felt about them. And I don't know if we could like look at those results from you know this past spring semester, because I don't know how many people were actually in the survey that you emailed to them, but. I know actually what was done this past spring, so we could look into that.
So uh, they heard the feedback from one week and they're trying to do what's right. So I just wanted to report that. They brought me in so I could try to spice things up, but then they were just got so into it. Like three hours was great. Nice to know that like all these clubs are still on the ball. Um, and finally, I know that sex trivia from WXIN starts at 8 p.m. And I've seen some eyes, especially for certain XIN members, looking at that clock since 7.30. So I'm going to conclude my announcements now out of respect for the sex trivia where I will go in.
the example was like if it's polo, then it comes to SEG. But if it's water polo, that's an NCAA sport, and, and have we have a swimming pool. pool, so it would go under athletics. But those are the dimensions that we have now as far as budgeting and funding. I don't have exact, exact numbers or figures or who's getting what, but I can look into it for you. Yes, that's great. Egypt, Egypt's concern, clouding Egypt's information. Understandable. Please toss all of your wrappings in the proper trash receptacle and keep in our student parliament chamber.